to me, consciousness is awareness. Awareness is paying attention and noticing. And so 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a set of unconscious automatic programs that we've just practiced so many times that we're not consciously thinking about those. So in order for you to change, to answer the initial question that you asked, the first step is you got to become conscious of your unconscious thoughts. And you got to you got to start looking at those hardwired thoughts that, that you think every day that are just circuits that have been fired and wired together. How do we do that? Should we t write a list at the end of the day or one of the most common thoughts we have that day? Like how does someone become aware of thoughts? You don't have thoughts? to do that. You just have to sit down, close your eyes and not move. And then you'll get, you'll, you'll start seeing. What am I thinking about right yeah, now? Yeah, and all you want to do is observe the thought because <laughs> when you begin to observe that thought, you're no longer the program now. You're the consciousness uh -huh. observing the program and you're starting to pull out of the thinking program. Of the, thinking about the thinking. Yeah, who's doing the thinking of the thinking about the thinking? That's who you are <laughs> when you're not the program. That's awareness, right? Yeah, yeah. You got to become aware of how you speak, how you act, become so conscious, so aware of it that you won't go unconscious and let that thought or that behavior run you. You got to say, oh my God, this feeling that I've been living by for the last 20 years is actually guilt. I didn't know it was guilt because it just feels like me. And all of a sudden, as you start becoming conscious of it, you're beginning to objectify your subjective self. You're, you're pulling out of those programs and nobody likes to do that because it's uncomfortable. They'd rather turn on their cell phone, start texting, get on the internet, like, uh, you know, watch TV to distract them from that moment. And that is what they have to move through in order to get to their, to, to their own personal freedom. So the first step is becoming conscious and m meditation means to become familiar with to become conscious of to to become so conscious of your unconscious self that you won't go unconscious to any thought any right. behavior or emotion and get ready because it takes a tr tremendous amount of energy to do that and awareness to stay conscious, to stay conscious. and so we fall from grace yeah fine you got you got you're awake, you got another day, let's go again. How often do you fall? Oh my gosh, I mean, <laughs> how many times have I done it? Thousands, but I'm not gonna give up because the moments in which I do connect or the moments that I do have that transcendental experience, what matters the most after it, when I have that transcendental moment, I look back at all of those difficult meditations, those difficult days, and those are the ones you remember. You don't remember the good meditations. Mm -hmm. You remember the ones where you came up against yourself yeah. and you went a little further. And you said, I'm gonna go a little further, I'm gonna go a little further. Or you had a rough day and you just went in and you just, you, at the end of the day, you surrender and you have the classic, oh my God, moment. There's no linear correlation. It's just whether you're willing to live in creation instead of living in survival. And so um, you get better at it. You know, we just get better at it. And, and for me, um, Staying conscious and staying aware and staying present is an art because mm -hmm. you you know when someone's present with you in your life because they're paying attention to you. You know when they're not present with you because they're not paying attention to you. So imagine this field of information, this, this, this intelligence that lives within you and I that's governing everything material in this world. It's a self-organizing intelligence. You have access to it, so you better get present with it mm -hmm. as well as you can get present with anything else. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It, that, that, that realm you can't experience with your senses. You can only experience with your awareness. So then people have to take their attention off their bodies and go from a somebody to a nobody. Mm. Take their attention off the people in their life and go from that they identify with and go from a someone to a no one take their attention off the things in their life, their cell phone, their computer, their car, and go from something to nothing. Take their attention off where they sleep, where they work, where they're sitting, and go from somewhere to nowhere. Mm. Take their attention off the predictable future and the familiar past and time, and go from some time to no time. And now if you're taking all of your attention off of everything material in this three-dimensional reality, now there's only one other thing that's left. That means you're in awareness, your consciousness. And now, that is the bridge, that is the door mm -hmm. to the quantum field, and you can't enter the quantum field as a somebody. So, wow. if someone has spent their whole life working on having the perfect body, or so much so they have so much attention on their pain, where you place your attention is where you place your energy, it's going to take some work for them to take all of their attention off their body, right? Because they'll go, they'll do it, and then they'll go back, let's see if the pain's still there. Oh, the pain's still there. So, 
it's a little bit of a waltz in the beginning, but as people start applying this, you start getting better at it. As an example, we had Bond University, a uh, 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 university in Australia on the Gold Coast. A uh, senior researcher took the large majority of my brain scans, and they had, she had them analyzed by her graduate students, and they, they statistically looked at everything. One of the most startling things for the research team was our community's ability to go to to get to that point where there's nobody, no one, no thing, no where, no time. And I'm talking four seconds. I'm talking five seconds. I'm talking nine seconds. Just like, just give me a second. I know how to do this. They they've practiced it enough times that the creative moment is when you get beyond yourself, when you dissociate from everything known in your material world. Turns out when you do that and you start changing your brain waves. Your brain waves slow down into alpha and theta. You're suppressing the memory bank of the known self that keeps you plugged into three-dimensional reality. Mm. When you quiet down this mechanism, now all of a sudden you start connecting to that field. And when you can stay conscious in those subconscious realms, when you can literally regulate and change brain waves, now you're in the operating system where you can make those significant changes. So we now know that when people apply the formula. And they do that properly. Now they're walking through that door where they're ready to create from. In other words, you can't create from the known. You can't create with your body. That's matter trying to change matter. And you can do it. It's just going to take a long time. Right. But when you create from the field instead of from matter, there's a whole different set of dynamics that takes place. And and why not push that envelope to see? Okay, if we've done this, we've done this. Is it possible to do this? As an example, we do these wonderful healing. Circles where you see these dramatic, instantaneous changes. So the person who's healed themselves of some health condition, when it comes time to heal somebody else, that's they're going to say, "Well, now I understand the science. I understand how this all works. I know how to get beyond myself. I know how to open my heart." They start piecing it all together. Let's take the formula to the next level. Now they witness a significant change in a person's body in real time, right there. So then the next question is, okay, like this happened many times. As an example, the woman who was at the event in Mallorca, Spain,、uh, her brother had a massive stroke uh, in uh, in Colombia, and she went back to Colombia, and he was in a coma for two weeks.、Mm-hmm. She called up the healing circle and said, "Hey, can we do a healing on my brother?" Now, if you're playing by the rules of Newtonian physics, three-dimensional reality, you're going to say, "Well, you need to be in front of the." The guy in order to heal him, but if you understand that there's no separation in the quantum, that there's everything's connected when you're in that place. So wouldn't that be the next application of the formula? So they go over the science, they get it. Okay, we don't need, we just need a picture of him, and that's our coordinate. And if we're in the field, sending a frequency to that coordinate. Yeah, but but you're not sending it anywhere because there's nowhere to send. There's no space and time、it's、there. Connecting. You're connecting to it exactly. That's a great great way to say it. In one hour, after that coherence healing, he comes back to consciousness. Wow! Now, that's the extension of where we're going. You see, now, now, now we're progressing. A woman who was in one、uh, who,、uh, one coherence healing group is a pediatric nurse in、uh, in Children's Hospital in Seattle, and again witnessed the amazing miracle after our event in Toronto. She comes back, and there's a little. They call them friends. There's a little guy failing. Doctors hit him with the paddles. They use all the all the drugs to bring him back, and they walk out of the room, and they say, "We, we lost him." She walks over, puts her hands right in the field, and this kid comes right back online. Doctors are like, "What was that?" And now, so we have the a lot of our interest now is, I want to get 50 percent. One out of two people. We're collecting the data in this coherence healings. When we're 50 percent. We're going to walk into a children's hospital. We have three children's hospitals right now that are interested in us. We'll show them the data.、Mm. We'll show them the results. We'll say we don't want any money. We'll never even touch the kids. All we want to do is just change.